Welcome back to the Blue Chair Breakdown of All Spans. I'm your host, Bull. We are one sleep away from kickoff officially starting. By the time y'all see this video, we'll be about 24 hours away from kickoff. So obviously that's very, very exciting. And we did get to see some week one matchups last night. And NC State is who I want to talk about today, obviously, because we have them next week. Now, some of y'all might not like this because you don't like to look past teams, but we're fans, okay? We're not on the team. We're not playing on the team. Uh, you know, we're not coaching, nothing like that. So it's okay for us to look ahead. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. I have a lot of takeaways from that game last night. Um, and also, we might be going live tonight around 7 o'clock for Rome versus Carrollton. And we have a linebacker committed in the 2025 class that goes to Rome. And his name is Jaden Harmon. He's a really good one. Actually, he's our most recent linebacker commit. And he's going to be playing up against a few of our targets, uh, you know, for the 2026 class and uh, 2027 as well. But also Juju Lewis plays for Carrollton. So that should be a pretty fun game. We'll see if we can get that up live for y'all. Keep a close eye out on the channel. But as always, y'all, please make sure to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so NC State beat Western Carolina 38-21. to The game was a lot closer than the final score. It was close for about three quarters of this game. And I think Western Carolina just kind of ran out of gas or whatever it is. But take a look at some of these stats right here. Grayson McCall, 26 of 40, which I believe is about 65%. He had 318 yards passing, three touchdowns, one interception. And you can see over here, uh, Western Carolina's quarterback went 24 of 40 for 241. So, uh, you know, I think that they did a pretty good job of passing the ball through the air. Now, as you just look at NC State's rushing, Jordan Waters ends up with 20 carries for 123 yards. And as a team, they rushed for 203 yards. This is big because they didn't do a great job of running the football last year they were averaging about you know somewhere around 130 140 yards per game up until like the final two or three games of the season so that looks good but at the same time they got like 100 something yards rushing in the second half so i would not call it a you know dominant performance by their rushing game by any means as you can see jordan waters long was 50 yards and he is the transfer running back from duke now let's come on down here oh and also you can see the west carolina was able to run for 120 yards 6.3 yards per carry uh, versus NC State. Now let's come on down to the receiving numbers. KC Concepcion is a stud. He's a really good. Uh, he's a really good football player. Kind of reminds me of a smaller Luther Burden, but you can see right here nine catches for 121 yards, 13.4 yards per catch, three touchdowns. Also, Justin Jolie or uh, Justin Jolly. I still don't know how to exactly say his name, but that's the tight end from UConn that we had brought up on a visit from the transfer portal last season. And he really wanted to come to Tennessee, but we turned him away because he wasn't big enough for our system. And y'all know that the rest is pretty much history. We go on and get Holden Stays and Miles Kitzman to add to our tight end room. But I think that he looks really good, obviously, coming up versus us. He's going to have a point to prove because we actually turned him away. And they were just hell-bent on coming on to Knoxville. So those two players, for sure, we're going to have to try to minimize what they do coming up next weekend. But, you know, as a unit, you know, obviously 318 yards where I talked about that. Uh, let's see what they did here on defense. Move on down. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. All right. So their leading tackler is actually Aiden White, who is their best cornerback. I was not overly impressed with him in this game. He got beat a few times. We'll kind of highlight all this stuff, but I just wanted to show y'all what the box score looked like, some of the stats, things like that. But this right here just kind of tells you, okay, well, it seems like uh, Western Carolina was trying to get the ball out on the, uh, you know, outside, things like that. You know, maybe they just weren't doing a great job of coverage. And that's why this cornerback is going to have the most tackles for that team. That's that's very atypical. You do not see that very often. Uh, but, you know, those are my biggest takeaways right there from the stats. All right, so let's take a step back. Let's look at this whole game from a 50-foot view. My biggest takeaways, number one, um, would be that NC State was not overlooking Western Carolina necessarily. Now, were they looking past two Tennessee? Some, yes, you know, they probably were being kind of light in their play calls, especially early on in this game. But as it turned into a game with that, you know, that they had to win, I'm sure that they opened things up. It looks like they did. I'm seeing the exact same stuff that we saw from their films last season. So I think that they opened it up a pretty good bit. We'll talk more about that here in just a second. I just feel like Western Carolina came out and they wanted this game more. They just played a little bit harder with a little bit more of an edge and they pretty much ran out of gas in that fourth quarter. But I saw Western Carolina as a team that really was probably more prepared. OK, uh, they look like they knew exactly what NC State was doing several times, especially, you know, their defense. There were times, man, when they're running the routes for NC State's wide receivers. I saw that a lot. Now, people were open just because obviously NC State has a lot better talent than Western Carolina does. 
And also, you know, there were a few plays that were just schemed and drawn up at perfect times down the distance, all that type of stuff that lets me know that, um, you know, West Carolina understood what NC State was going to do on those downs and distances. And they were able to score on those players to get, you know, really big chunks, things like that. So that leads me to believe, okay, that more than likely we've been trading notes with them. I think that they gave us some notes on UT Chattanooga and we gave them some on NC State. And I'm going to promise you that if that is the case, within the next couple of days, somebody from Tennessee will be on the phone with somebody from Western Carolina to get additional notes, uh, you know, post game. Like, okay, you know, what did you see? You know, how do they look out there? What's the speed like? What's the size? Boom, 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 all the way down the list. So just seeing how how prepared Western Carolina was lets me know that we will have a really solid game plan for NC State. And that's always very important. Now, as far as how did NC State really lose this game you know, again, from a 50 foot view, I would say that they kind of shot themselves in the foot with some really bad penalties, uh, you know, and just like the absolute worst times. And I mean, that'll always get you. So that's something that you can expect should get cleaned up heading into next week. I'm you know, positive that that, that will be a point of emphasis from their head coach. Um, and then, you know, also, I don't really feel like Western Carolina, you know, really dominated the line of scrimmage. I saw that in some places like, oh, man, Western Carolina is just dominating NC State. I didn't really see that. Now, on some plays like we talked about. They had a perfect play call. You know, they schemed it up well and, uh, you know, they executed it well. And it may have looked like they were dominant. But whenever I say dominance, I'm talking about moving bodies. Okay, I didn't really see Western Carolina doing a ton of that. Uh, you know, they also did a really good job with some run blitzes in third and short situations, fourth and short situations. Um, and, you know, I think that NC State tried to get a little bit too cute in some of those situations. And that's why they weren't able to convert. Now, on the flip side of that, keep in mind, Western Carolina's defensive front is not nearly as talented as Tennessee's is by any means, okay? We've got some real dogs. This is not, uh, you know, Florida State situation in week zero where people are hyping them up and they're not really that. No, no, no. This, this is, we are really those dudes, okay? They are some bad men up there and uh, and they play with a chip on their shoulder. You will never have to worry about a Rodney Gardner coached, uh, you know, defensive line not playing with a whole bunch of effort. They all will, and we're going to come in waves. And it's not just about that front four, but the linebacker core, Forget about it. It's it's deep. And I think that NC State struggling to push Western Carolina around lets me know that we are probably going to get the better of them in the run game. Um, and, you know, again, we're going to touch on all this stuff as we continue to kind of unfold, uh, you know, more and more about what we saw in this game. But those are some of my biggest takeaways. I don't think that it was some dominant performance up front by Western Carolina. But at the same time, if you're an NC State fan, then you got to be a little bit concerned that you weren't dominant up front versus Western Carolina. Now, um, on to the next points. Let's talk about the offense, okay? Number one, I think that it's the, pretty much the exact same offense that we saw last season, okay? And that is to be expected. We kind of touched on that earlier. But, I mean, they're running the exact same stuff. You're going to see a whole lot of stretch plays, outside zone plays, RPOs. Uh, you know, they're going to make the offensive line go one way, throw the ball back this way. They like to use KC Concepcion as a, a decoy a lot in the orbit motions when they're running, things like that. I mean, it's typical of what they have always done. And I think that they executed some things well. Again, the running game, they, they, they're they going to have to get better at that, okay? If they want to win the ACC, if they want to beat some of these bigger teams, the running game, they are going to have to improve there without question. Um, also, they had several wide receivers that were wide open that Grayson McCall just missed. I don't think that this was his sharpest game. He did throw for 300 yards, but, I mean, he had four or 500 yards worth of wide receivers open that he just flat out missed and they're not just open you know like on some short stuff they're open for you know potential touchdowns uh you know definitely big gains so i know that nc state fans have to be a little bit concerned about that now i'm going to ask was it just some first game jitters or you know what's going on i i think that he will end up playing better next weekend or you know being sharper i'm not gonna say playing better but i think that he will play sharper and I also think, just kind of going back to the offensive line, they did a really good job in pass protection. A lot of the passes that he missed wasn't because of pressure. He just flat out missed them. So one of the biggest question marks for me is going to be, can Tennessee get pressure on uh, NC State? The good news for us is it looks like they are willing to kind of let the plays develop down the field, which will give us more time to get to him. And I think that we will. I think that they're going to struggle mightily. We'll see what he does, uh, you know, whenever he's really got some pressure sitting in his lap. If you're not able to be accurate with a very clean pocket, what are you going to do when James Pierce and Joshua Josephs and uh, Caleb Herring and everybody else, Jason Jenkins, uh, Big O, Omar Nomala, all those guys are coming at you from inside, outside. We're going to dial up blitzes every now and then. What's he going to do then? I think 
that uh, right now you've got to feel very good if you are a Tennessee fan. But we haven't seen our boys play just yet. We have to wait for sure to see if they are who we think that they will be. But so far, y'all, I feel I feel very confident about the way that we match up versus their offense. Um, take a look at my notes and some other takeaways. Uh, I think that that's pretty much it for the offense. You know, I just wanted to make sure that we touched on some of the key points again, just to kind of highlight what we talked about. The offensive line doesn't look great as far as run blocking goes. They do a whole lot of, you know, zone schemes where you don't necessarily have to, uh, you know, be moving bodies. You just have to kind of get your body in the way. But I think that they're going to struggle doing that versus our front. At the same time, though, Missouri ran those same plays up against us last season, and we didn't really have an answer for it. I think a lot of that goes back to the linebacker play, which should be much improved this season. The linebacker should eat on all those plays. So, uh, you know, next point was that the offensive line did a really good job in pass protection, but they're going up against a much inferior defensive line compared to what they'll see versus our volunteers. Um, and also, you know, Grayson McCall just was not accurate in the first game, but he's got over 10,000 yards passing. Uh, you know, I think he's close to 70% accurate. So you would have to anticipate that that's going to pick up. That's not going to stay the same. And we already touched on uh, guys like Casey, Concepcion, and um, Justin Jolie or Jolly. Those two guys, you have to really watch them for sure in the passing game. Now let's talk about uh, the defense, okay? What I took away from them, they're continuing to struggle. Like we talked about this entire week, they are continuing to struggle with the gap scheme runs, okay? Uh, we saw that all of last season. We are continuing to see the exact same thing. And they did have a linebacker that went out early in this game, um, but he will be back, I believe, for the, for the Tennessee game just because he went out in the first half. I think that he only has to set off for one half, and he already set off for the second half of the Western Carolina game. So just want to throw that out there because I know some people are going to be wondering about it. But, yeah, I mean, they struggle with that. They also struggle with two tight end sets. Okay, we're seeing that. So NC State runs a 3-3-5. And, you know, you should be able to, um, you know, you should be able to pull some guys around, you know, use your leverage, things like that, gap scheme run versus them and have some gaping holes. Okay, but the thing about the 3-3-5, is it does a really nice job of stopping spread offenses. And we've struggled with that. Coach Heifel has struggled with that. Have we figured it out? I think that the answer to it is going to be two tight end sets. You can still run your tempo. You can, uh, you know, flex Ethan Davis out as a wide receiver sometimes, okay, and use him that way. But you can also bring him back in in some tighter sets to get that extra man in to block. You know, we typically run one tight end. I think that we'll do fine with that. You know, we run the gap schemes with our tight end a bunch. But, you know, I would just like to see us, if we're not doing a great job of establishing the run game, I would love to see us add an additional tight end. It, you know, try it for at least one series. We can do that, and let's see how it works. I have a feeling that we'll have a ton of success doing that versus teams that like to run three three fives or three-man fronts in general, but especially versus NC State. Um, you know, they also are still struggling with zone reads and quarterbacks who can run. Now, you know, the quarterback from, for Western Carolina is not Nico, but they struggle with him. I don't remember how many yards he had rushing, but it was a bunch. He had several big time plays and, uh, you know, Nico will run the ball versus them. I think that this will be the first game that people will be on notice of, man, look, Nico is a problem because he should be able to throw for a bunch of yards, but he should most definitely be able to run for a lot of yards. People don't understand how fast and how, uh, you know, elusive and shifty Nico actually is because he's so tall, he's so long, but he can make you miss and he is a dog i don't think he's afraid to lower his shoulder or none of that he is a fearless fearless warrior so not to boost us up too much y'all i'm just calling it like i see it okay i'm not telling y'all nothing that y'all will not see on saturday coming up uh let's see what else i have here in my notes now their secondary played a ton of men in this game now i don't know if that was just because they didn't want to see or they just didn't want for tennessee to see a lot of their different schemes and things like that i also saw them you know drop eight run cover three things like that. I mean, they can do a lot of funky things because they have so many people um, that aren't playing up on the line of scrimmage, but they can also bring guys up to the line of scrimmage. So they can give you a whole lot of different looks, but I just noticed that versus Western Carolina, they played a lot of men. The secondary is supposed to be the strongest unit on their entire team, and I was not impressed. They were getting beat a lot by Western Carolina's wide receivers. Our wide receivers, I mean, we're deep with some guys that can go. We're talking about Dante Thornton, Brew McCoy, Squirrel White, Chris Brazel, uh, I mean, listen, Chaz Nimrod, who's up to 220 pounds. Um, who else we got? Uh, Caleb Webb, Mike Matthews. You know, he might get into this game. Braylon Staley. What if Nathan Leacock gets in? We probably won't play all those guys, but we got a lot of guys that can go. A lot of guys that I feel like if you want to play one-on-one -on -one coverage with us, man-to-man, -man, we're going to beat you, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, especially if you're not getting pressure on us. Uh, that's It's going to be very tough for them to stop us playing that sort of a defense all the time. 
So I think that they will try to mix things up. And that was probably one of those instances where they're just kind of trying to cover things up, you know, to keep us from seeing what their schemes and things are moving forward. But I mean, listen, old habits die hard. I mean, they've got the same OC, I believe. And uh, I think DC might be a new defensive coordinator, but either way, we're going to know what their tendencies are. And people tend, you know, people usually do not get away from their tendencies. Uh, now let's see what else do I have here. They do like the blitz. I saw them blitzing a lot. Usually if you're going to play a, a you know, bunch of man, you're going to have to blitz. You can't just play man and think that your front four is going to get home all the time. So saw a whole lot of different blitzes. I saw, you know, some different looks where they might have one safety playing high, like in the middle of the field and he'll come blitz from the third level. And then, you know, they'll bring a linebacker right up underneath him, just kind of overload that a gap, uh, things like that. So, yeah, I mean, there's some things that you're going to have to kind of be able to identify, you know, I feel like pre snap and everyone's got to be on the same page. And especially, you know, third and long situations, they really like to dial it up uh, in those in those instances. And I think overall, y'all, that if we can establish a good run game early and get those safeties, you know, get those, uh, you know, get a lot of those secondary pieces that they like to float around from, you know, the first level to the second to the third level. If we get them up into the first and, you know, second levels a lot more than all of a sudden, man, look down the field, we're going to have people wide open all the time. And I think that that's what we're going to try to do. Come out early, establish that running game, whether it's with the, you know, read options, things like that, uh, or if it's with RPOs. Let me also say this. they It looks like they struggle versus RPOs too. So that is, I think that there's a lot of things in that defense that's, I don't know if not fundamentally sound is the correct word, but there's something off right there. I, you know, I haven't seen enough film to really be able to ID what that is, but something is off with all the reads and things like that. Maybe they're just a step too slow. Maybe they're over-processing. Whatever that is, I think that we'll see a bunch of that versus them next Saturday. Um, and, you know, I think that that is pretty much it, y'all. You know, I think that, you know, if we, you know, again, come out on defense, if we can, um, you know, stop their run game, um, you know, make sure that we can get some type of pressure on Grayson, then we should be fine down the field. Now, they do have some guys that can make you pay, and they will win some matchups. They do a lot of stuff that Tennessee has struggled with, but I think that we'll be fine in this one um, just because I feel like we are going to manhandle them up front. It's something that we had identified way back in spring practice. I told you I had been watching them in some spring clips, and I said, man, look, they've got some really good athletes. But up front, I think that we are going to push them around. I still feel the exact same way. I think I feel even more that way coming out of this Western Carolina game. And then, you know, on the flip side, uh, talking about our offense, we're going to have to establish that running game early. Uh, but we will get into a lot more notes as this week progresses y'all already know that uh very excited about our game coming up tomorrow hope to see everyone on the live stream we'll probably start that one at around 11 a.m but we will have that out uh for y'all officially at some point today but as always thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and make sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell share with your friends family and other volunteer fans we'll see y'all on the next one thanks peace